I'm very nervous. I haven't done this in such a long time, really. Hello, Thistledown Gang. Welcome back to my channel, if you've already been here. If not, hi, it is wonderful to have you here. Please stay, and by that I mean subscribe. Grab a pot of tea, because a cup isn't is, is never enough, and uh, have, have an imaginary cookie and uh, or, or a piece of cake. <clears throat> Rather cake, because I, I like cake. And uh, yeah, hi, it's been a while. Um, it's been a while because I've been incredibly busy with university and uh, life, mostly like missing spoons in general. Um, but hey, here I am uh, and I'm making this video before it is too late. Do I know if, if I, I, I can actually manage to edit it before February comes around? Mm. I don't know, we'll... Ugh. Yes, it is a new year and I've been watching a ton of 2024 trend predictions lately. Um, and I thought, hey, why, why not make my own video about 2024 trend predictions? Now, I have absolutely no idea about what's in. I, I have no idea. I recently asked a fellow student, someone who's far younger than me and therefore hip, um, if Bucketheads were still in, apparently, thankfully, no. But that was the last thing I kinda got. Most of my understanding of trends comes from new Sims 4 packs. I don't know, I haven't been fashionable for, um, at least not, not consciously fashionable, for the last 30 something years. And so the topic of this video is not probable trend predictions, no, it's improbable trend predictions for 2024. Welcome to my not really TED talk. So item number one of my predictions for trends in 2024 is Baroque. Enough with Regency. We've had, we've had enough of the Bridgerton stuff, just defenestrate it, throw it right out of the window. No more high waist, no more Mr. Darcy apologists. No, no shade to you if you are a Mr. Darcy apologist. I'm more of a uh, that bloke from Northanger Abbey type myself. Also enough Marie Antoinette. Absolute hold that from Coco has had over pop culture trends ever since Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette, which has been out for, like, what? A lot of time? Never mind. Uh, that was not what I wanted to talk about, but enough Regency, enough Marie Antoinette. Now we're doing Baroque. The enlightenment, the absolute riot and stupidity that is Moliere. Did I have that right here just to flaunt it into the camera? No. Those are actually the, the, the works of Moliere that I still plan on finishing reading. Um, <clears throat> have I read any word of Moliere since August? No, never mind. And of course, Charles II, my love, not just mine. He was very promiscuous and I hope so, and I think so were a lot of his mistresses. Good for all of them. This means lavishly folded velvet in very soft, creamy, pastel colors and spiced wine hues. And some jewel tones of shoulder blouses for the femininely inclined billowy sleeves for everyone, which is great because you can just reuse your uh, Bridgerton era billowy sleeves. Good thing. We like a trend that is um, that is uh, upcyclable, like upcyclable, soft bows everywhere, especially on your shoes. I don't know why I don't see this more often, but big bows, floppy bows tied on shoes. And I think we will see that in the coming year or in, in, in the current year, because bows just remain a big trend. This is actually not just one of mine, that is one that I've seen in a lot of other videos too, so I didn't just make that one up. Huge lace collars, you can actually put that on other garments, which is great. It's just a way to baroque up your normal outfit, just a, a big 
lacy colour. Either just like a thick Peter Pan colour or even going up your neck or flopping over. You can go all out there or tiny and I love this because that means you can just adjust your normal like business work school attire to fit this trend without going all out in the everyday and of course Baroque pearls. The very item that gave the era its name. You can get those at the craft store, you can get those at the thrift store. I've got several of mine at the thrift store, the flea market. It might be a bit much for this one, so I'll cover more of that in another video, but here's a short annotation to Baroque in general. The Baroque era covers quite a bit of temporal ground, from about 1600 to the 1730s. Some might argue that Rococo can be counted as an extension of Baroque, as the late era sort of blends into it, but we won't do such a thing here. Early Baroque differs quite a lot from the late, but thus is the blessing of the late born, we can just pick and choose from the timeline. Aside from great fashion, music and theatre, the era gave us such things as the Thirty Years War, bad, and the Age of Enlightenment, bad if you don't like moths, good if you like revolutions but also fantastic art and architecture. Item number two in my predictions for 2024 is glitter, or rather, sparkle. I know we've had metallics and we've had like the glitter era, which has been a while, but honestly, I, I, I don't do well with time. But now is the time for sparkle. And I mean like gold work sparkle. We're talking golden glass beads here, Golden embroidery, gold work, actual gold work, bead embroidery and beadwork. Things that sparkle out of themselves and are not, hopefully, comprised of microplastics. Gold work doesn't only come in the European variety, which is, by the way, great if you want to tie it in with the Baroque, but if you want a bit of a juxtaposition, that's great. And you also have China. You have India, you have Southeast Asia to grasp for your inspiration for this trend and make it your own depending on your cultural or ancestral alliances, people you work with. Don't forget to give credit to especially non-European or non-white creators and traditions, by the way, this is important beadwork you can also get that in an Egyptian variety or adhering to Native American traditions like a lot of them like Native American just like European by the way is not just one big culture it's a plethora of cultures and each and every one of them has their own varieties of things and I think this is a good year to dive into those varieties and Look into what makes them different from other ones and which one is the right one for you. Once again, please give credit. Number three on my list for 2024 trends, and I didn't make that one up completely myself, um, but I hope that I'm being kind of convincing or at least entertaining with the others, is doll fashion. Doll fashion means big ruffles, very female gaze actually or rather old female gaze we're talking basically grandma here but grandma like in the 1970s so someone who grew up around the turn of the century i'm making this complicated right bright blush maybe somewhat exaggerated eyes wide liner inside your your um shiny fabrics a bit exaggerated, very mm, slightly too big accessories. Like just a certain artificial vibe. You can of course go Barbie. I personally would go um, would go old porcelain doll. I tend to pick up um, old doll collector magazines from my thrift store for inspiration, so I would suggest you do that. Maybe, you know, do, do you remember those 
plushy um, backpacks because those would absolutely smash together with this this kind of dollish trend. So I think part of what gave us this trend is uh, the whole Barbie core um, flare up we had last year and partially we're just going to kind of a similar place that um, Lolita Fashion has, has gone to for like by now close to I think 30 to 40 years um, and that is uh, concentrating on a very female gaze, on a feminization to a point where the male gaze doesn't want it anymore. And I like that. I think we should celebrate that. I mean, if you want to dress for the male gaze, that's absolutely okay. I, as a staunch feminist, say dress however you want and if you want to dress like a hacking anglerfish, fool male identifying people with a masculine gaze that's do it do it just get what you want but i really like this over exaggeration and i think um just because i said defenestrate bridgerton um which i i stand by but i think we also have to thank them for part of this because it is this over feminization this um over feminization I, I don't think there's over in in that regard um it was i this extreme female gaze that enables us to um think more into those um into those fashion passageways in a way and I think that's extremely fascinating and I love seeing what becomes of it. Matching that trend very well and also something that I heard in a couple of other predictions are bonnets and bonnets just work for every season that's great I love a trend that works for an entire year rather than just one season because you can just Wear a lace bonnet for spring, you can have a huge straw bonnet or a sun bonnet for summer and knit and velvet in the colder seasons and you can combine it with all of the other trends I've mentioned before. You can have gold work glitter on it, you can have, especially on the, on the later in the year varieties or middle of the year if you're Australian, you know, the colder parts of the year. Um, you can have gold work on it for the colder seasons because that looks great on velvet. You can put bows on them because honestly bonnets and bows go together like, I mean they get on like a house on fire. Please don't set anything on fire. And baroque motifs work on there. You can, this, this just like, it, it just locks in with the dolly trend. I think that's fantastic. and. There are these these absolutely lovely little bonnets with the like tiny tiny devil's horns. I think those are so adorable. I love a trend that is so easily made yourself because honestly, making a bonnet is not that hard. You take a straw hat, either from the dollar store or the thrift store, or you can get those really cheap. And just chop off part of it and then. Okay, you might have to seal it up on, on, on the ground, but you can do that with a hot glue gun if you have to. And then just put a, put a few things on there and it's done and you have a bonnet and it's great. I might as well do a video on that one. If I have the time. I don't know. I would like that. Tell me in the comments if you would like that. The next list item is citrus. And I wouldn't have thought before that I would put a smell on here and I'm not... Can smells be trendy? Me personally, I'm currently obsessed with Petit Grain, but any citrus smell will do. <laughs> Citruses are always fresh, they're absolutely timeless. Deviating from the scent part, 
dried orange slices are absolutely beautiful. They look like stained glass, but nature's stained glass. Also, pomanders, you know, the, 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 the orange um, pricked with, uh, with cloves or sliced open and then dried, they smell great and they look great. They also tie in with a Baroque trend. And think of the motives. Like, the good thing about this trend, once again, is its versatility. I think this is what we're seeing here. Versatility in trends. A normal lemon or orange print can range from very stylized 80s over kawaii to botanical Victorian prints or even earlier. You can go for monochrome, beautiful, like etching style print too very colorful. It's great. It's a great range and still encompasses the same thing. Also the colors, the colors are also fine. Especially pomelo pink. Mm. Oh, hello. little body here brings us to our next trend which is shield box I mean look at us we are really pretty we have all the nice patterns and we are really easy to come by for example I live in this flat along with a lot of other people because I'm not a threat here I'm only a threat if you are a, you know a fruit farmer because I really like your fruit and uh, therefore will eat it I think we deserve more love and uh, I mean we might make a pretty loud hum when we fly around but we are very resilient and strong and so should you be you know this world is pretty much a shit show but if you are like me and very resilient uh, you can get through it I mean yeah arguably I'm uh, not great if you're a farmer but if you are a city dweller or someone who doesn't have a lot of uh, of fruit trees. You, you, you're gonna be fine, you know? Um, and, you know, consider me as, as an ornament. Like, just, or, or a motive. Because I, I am very article. Look at me. Okay, um, this was our, our guest presenter. Idiot the bug. He just flew into the wall. Uh, indeed, yes. Shield bugs are very, very resilient. They are immune to most pesticides, actually. And I think they deserve more love. They are also just very pretty and indeed very article in their shape. Um, they don't do anything. In fact, if you don't, uh, if, if you're not a piece of fruit, um, they might actually eat your pieces of fruit. But aside from that, they're perfectly harmless. And they tend to, you know, they, they tend to nest in, in like crevices around your windows. Don't don't kill them if you find them. They are cute. And this brings us to our last trend for this 2024 very improbable trends prediction. And that is turn of the century stained glass. Like, you know, gothic stained glass is great. Full on Art Nouveau stained glass, fantastic. No questions asked. Renaissance stained glass. Mm -hmm. But I think we have been sleeping on the turn of the century stained glass and I think this year might change that. We are talking arts and crafts, reform steel, human steel, uh, art nouveau, belle époque and early article here. Like these kind of simple but very masterfully made uh, stained glass windows. Think home decor as in big sticker sheets for your windows or self-made variants with window paint and prints. Prints everywhere. We should definitely and I think we will, um, hearkening back to the dolly aspect of things, uh, take a page out of the book of the Lolita community who has been 
um, printing like a lot of gothic or gothic revival windows onto their skirts for ages and take these motifs of stained glass windows and put them just onto shirts, onto skirts, maybe even onto pants because especially the very specific type of stained glass that I mean is very geometric and can be reproduced as a pattern. And I think this together with these sun shining through jewels, um, deep colors and these geometric patterns, uh, long lines, sometimes curving, a bit of Art Nouveau in there, sometimes, not always. You don't necessarily have to go Art Nouveau, you can also go Art Deco and everything in between and shortly before. I see in our future fantastic jewellery, either with real glass or even plastic, because sometimes you just have to sacrifice the fantastic quality. Ooh, ooh Raven. Um, have to sacrifice fantastic quality for comfort because I wouldn't want glass like this big on my ear. I don't do well with dangly, hairy things on my ears. Um, but I see that. I might even see, and that would be fantastic, a rise in hobbyist glass workers. That would be such a cool way to expand this trend. And it is perfectly fine if it's homemade. You can, as I said, go into the window color decoration trend, just get up your stuff from the 90s, early 2000s and uh, make your own window paintings or steal, steal your stuff from your grandmother's winter decorations box. You can also take that into food, that's a great trend. I, my, I, I do remember stained glass cookies made with crushed hard candy. You can take that into food, think about that. I love it when a trend is like holistic. You can, I mean, you can take Baroque into food, but that's partially pretty weird. And uh, you can also take the citrus. I mean, you could take citrus flavored candy and crush it up and then make great stained glass cookies out of that. Just saying. And this simplified grid, these simplified patterns and simple non-gradient, mostly non-gradient colors work so well for home printing, for making things yourself, also lends itself great to uh, patchwork, which we have seen in the trends last year, in the last few years actually, with those patchwork, um, patchwork jackets especially, but I've seen a great patchwork like tracksuit um, on I think TikTok a few days ago. Fantastic. And that works so well with this trend. And you can incorporate that even into your home decor with big quilts, with even just pillow covers. Transforming your home to fit into this trend without having to change too much about it. And this concludes our improbable trend prediction for 2024. There's only one thing left to say about Pantone's color of the year, peach fuzz. One of my colleagues got the ick from the word alone and I cannot blame her. And I think, and that is something I want to say um, before I end this video, I think we are not doing justice to the rest of the peach because peaches have this absolutely beautiful gradient and actually a lot of these colors fit perfectly into a baroque palette we should just consider the whole peach for this year and i think this is where i end this video thank you so much for watching thank you for uh, enduring my wild predictions for this year's fashion, home decor and um, smells, I think, and insects. Never mind. Thank you so much for watching. 
Um, I hope I'll be back soon. I cannot guarantee for anything because I am going into an internship for half a year uh, after my exams. Um, I hope I'll, I'll get this up as soon as possible. Like, is it even valid to still post those after like January 10th? I don't know. I'll do it anyway because I recorded this and I had fun with it. Um, let me know which of these trends you are most excited for the, so that I can maybe uh, make a video about it because the more you comment about these things, the more motivated I am. Honestly, this is just how people work. Otherwise, I might just be motivated and not do it. Again, thank you so much for being here. I am so thankful that you are still here. Thank you. And uh, have, have, have an absolutely lovely day. Um, don't forget to be yourself and uh, stick it to the man. Bye! But I think we will in the coming in, in the coming year, yes. Um, item number two in my predictions for 2022. No, 2024. Fuck. It's a bit irritating because my, my bullet point for this just ends with an and.